What's up, everybody? If you want to join the greatest online Star Wars community, the Fandom Menace, make sure you hit that subscribe button before today's video starts so you don't miss out on any updates and you're always the first to know when our newest videos go live. The following is a World Class Bullshitters exclusive. Over the last few months, we've been discussing the rise of Skywalker's box office. How much will it make opening weekend? How much will it lose? How will it do in China? All valid questions. But as we've been told countless times, the opening weekend isn't the indicator for how well a film will do in its long run. The second weekend determines that, and now we know how it pertains to The Rise of Skywalker. We already discussed how The Rise of Skywalker opened with the lowest opening in the history of the sequel trilogy, but now it's time to talk about the normal folks who missed opening weekend and the repeat viewings, or lack thereof. Scott Mendelson has the story. Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker plunges 71% on Friday. Disney and Lucasfilm Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker earned $26.2 million on Friday, soaring past $300 million in North America and $600 million worldwide. The film fell 71% from its $90 million Friday, which is neither an emergency nor an exceptionally good hold. Ryan Johnson's The Last Jedi dropped 76% on its second Friday, while Rogue One fell 67% on its second Friday, and J.J. Abrams' The Force Awakens dropped 58% on its Friday, which just happened to fall on Christmas Day. As presumed, The Rise of Skywalker opened well below The Last Jedi, but is having stronger post-debut legs, which, as not to brag, exactly what I've been saying for the past two years. <sighs> oh, Scott. Credit the straight-from-opening weekend to holiday break scheduling as an advantage that Rogue One and The Last Jedi did not have, but The Force Awakens did. Barring a fluke in either direction, we can expect a $78 million second weekend gross, down a meh 56% from its initial $176 million opening weekend, which again, is the lowest opening in the history of Disney Star Wars. Sequel trilogy, of course. Solo? Well, hashtag Solo lost money. Star Wars grossed $309 million in its initial theatrical release in 1977, while The Empire Strikes Back earned $209 in 1980, and Return of the Jedi $252 in 1983. Sixteen years later, The Phantom Menace earned $431 domestically, followed by Attack of the Clones $310, with Revenge of the Sith $381 in 2005. To the extent that The Rise of Skywalker may have been rejiggered in order to placate The Last Jedi was terrible, folks, well... That might have been the case of preventing a field goal by allowing a touchdown. The immediate reception of The Rise of Skywalker still puts the franchise on a defensive come December 2022. Well, that's Scott's take, and he definitely has tenure doing what he does, but he also has a history of shilling for Disney. Is that what he's doing here? Oh, hell no. But again, I don't share his optimistic appraisal of the situation. As we've covered last time, sequel trilogy films' box office all trend downwards. They each make less than the film that preceded it. That's exactly what's happening with The Rise of Skywalker. Since Scott wants to make the comparison to The Last Jedi, let's go to the numbers, where spin is non-existent, and do a little more in-depth comparison between The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker's drop. So first off, the reported budget for The Rise of Skywalker is $13 million more than The Last Jedi. It's actually the most expensive Star Wars film ever. Yes, it's reported that it has the same budget as Solo, A Star Wars Story, and both films had expensive reshoots. So we may never know the cost of the film. They, the media, pronouns pal, keep skipping over that fact. The Rise of Skywalker cost more and made less, comparatively speaking, than The Last Jedi. Also, The Rise of Skywalker played on almost 200 more screens than The Last Jedi. You'd think that with more opportunities to see the film, that more people would come out to see it. Not the case. Let's not forget that. Now, with that out of the way, you'll see here that The Rise of Skywalker made about $400,000 more its second weekend, but it's still behind The Last Jedi overall, when compared to the exact same time frame. So saying that it's going to bounce back and do better than the second act in the trilogy is just seeming less and less likely. It's also funny how Scott likes to give leeway to The Rise of Skywalker for its opening so close to Christmas, but the film got a big bump on Christmas Day. A $12 million bump. When compared to The Last Jedi's $10 million Christmas bump, that's impressive, but that Christmas bump came 10 days after the film opened too, much longer after the hype died down. That means that The Force Awakens was so well received that people went to see The Last Jedi much later in its life cycle than The Rise of Skywalker. The Last Jedi broke Star Wars and all of Kennedy's horses and all of Kennedy's men couldn't put Star Wars back together again. Sorry, JJ. For the hell of it, let's take a look at the Chinese box office. Last weekend, The Rise of Skywalker brought in a whopping $12.1 million opening. Let's see where that film currently sits. Surely it's going to have made an additional $136 million because of all the Chinese people who were busy with the hockey season last weekend, right? Nope. Currently, The Rise of Skywalker has made $15.7 million in China. That's an additional $3.6 million, or a drop of 70%. Wow. That Chinese market that film studios want to cater to sure loves Star Wars, right? Wrong. The legacy of Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker will be that of a film that was released at the wrong time, because the audience hates movies and would rather run their head into the wall. That's why the film is making less than The Last Jedi. Not the quality of the Star Wars content, just the people. They hate movies. Or do they? 
Jumanji The Next Level is actually up 33% this weekend, according to Scott Mendelson, and is currently slated to become the biggest film this year not released by Disney or a comic book film. Personally, I tried to see it Saturday afternoon, but was turned away because the film sold out. When I did go to see the film at a later time, I had to sit in the first row, because the theater was nearly full. Now this is in Lansing, Michigan, which isn't the biggest or the best city in America. Detroit is, but it shows that people want Jumanji. Also, keep in mind that Jumanji The Next Level had a budget of $125 million, which is $150 million less than the reported Rise of Skywalker budget, making it more profitable. Disney may be having more big hits across the year, but films like Joker make Warner Brothers more money than Star Wars makes Disney. The Rise of Skywalker's real legacy will be the Star Wars film that didn't do it for anybody. There's a ton of topics swirling around the net in regard to this film, and we'll talk about some of those next time. So folks, what do you think of The Rise of Skywalker? We haven't done a proper review, but we will, don't worry. We're gonna treat it long form style, maybe a Mahler style review, because I got a lot of stuff to say about the film, but I don't think I can say it in just five or six minutes. So be on the lookout for that. Also, be on the lookout for The Mandalorian. Now that it's over, I'm gonna sit down, write my thoughts the entire series, and talk about the future trajectory of Disney Star Wars, how I feel about it, am I excited about it? Well, you'll just have to come back and watch to find out. But The Rise of Skywalker, it did have a huge drop, but are you surprised? Personally, I'm not. I knew in my heart of hearts that this would be the case because that special feeling of Star Wars is here. It just didn't come up this time. You know, even though I was cautious about The Force Awakens before it came out, there was hype. It was everywhere. Just because I didn't like it didn't mean people didn't go to see it. Clearly they did. But the nostalgia goggles wore off and less people saw The Last Jedi and even less people saw The Rise of Skywalker. So that's where we are right now. But I want to know what you think of this situation, so tell me down in the comments below. And uh, yeah, what do you think next weekend's gonna drop? So we're already out of $100 million. This movie is almost a $100 million loser club, which means that the film made $100 million less its second weekend. What a great, great problem to have, oh my god. But I mean, wouldn't repeat viewings and the big hype stick around for this great film? Or do we live in a disposable culture where everything comes out so frequently that nothing is special? I think that, mixed with bad Star Wars, which is what we have, makes Star Wars seem less than desirable. Go to your local store. Star Wars isn't really a thing anymore, but it is a movie here. Every time I make this argument, I have to hear, but it's not a movie here. Well, it's been a movie here every year since 2015, and Star Wars is at the bottom of the barrel. So folks, thank you for watching. Enjoy your new year. Go out, party, be safe. But as always, be excellent to each other.